Let's get ready for composition. You need your supply box and lined paper. Now today's special deed is a little bit different. It's a story about a horse race. Do you like horses? Have you ever seen a real horse? Sure you have. Driving around in the car, you've probably seen horses nibbling on the grass in a field somewhere. So let's take a look at some horse pictures just to jog your memory a little bit and think about the times that you have met a horse. See the horses in the pasture? Have you ever gotten a pet horse? Seen a, uh, gotten to pet him up close? Was it scary? How did he feel? Was he furry or fuzzy? Did he try to lick your hand? You know, horses love sugar cubes and they will um, look for them in your hand thinking you're going to sneak one from your pocket. But what are some things horses can do? Mm -hmm. Go to the county fair where they'll be judged to see how they look and how they stand. They could be in a parade. Have you ever seen a horse in a parade? How about policemen on a horse? There's a fun book called Robert the Rose Horse where he's a police horse for a while. That's a good story. Or have you seen a horse pull a carriage maybe? Taking a ride downtown or maybe outside in the snow? Ever see horses play in the snow? How about a rodeo? Ooh, that would be exciting to see horses running around and bucking like that. Or have you ever seen a horse just galloping across the field? Do you have much experience with horses? You know, on my 12th birthday, our neighbors let me ride their horse as a birthday surprise, but I wasn't very good at it, and I was very scared. You know, a horse will know if you're scared. Now, this horse had a saddle sore right where the saddle rubbed on his back, so they took the saddle off so it could heal because it was infected and very tender, but I didn't know what it was and they put me on the horse bareback. And when my neighbor asked me if I wanted to ride the horse by myself, I said, oh no, and I leaned over to give the reins back to him, and I touched that saddle sore with my hand. The horse jumped and took off running, and I did a backwards flip over the back of the horse, landed flat on the ground, and my arm landed on a rock in the road, and I broke my arm, and I've been afraid of horses ever since. Now, I've been on horses a couple of other times, but they could always tell that I was scared. Have you ever had an experience like that? Do you know how to ride a horse? Maybe that's something that you can write about and share with a friend. Well, today's story is about Miss Long and a horse and a new friend. Can you imagine Miss Long on a horse? She's at a county fair and she's going to be in a horse race. So listen carefully because I'm going to ask you some questions at the end of the story. Flags and banners snapped in the breeze at the annual county fair. The riders for this year's town race were getting their horses ready at the starting line. Miss Long and Miss Silent lined up with them. Hmm. Don't worry, Miss Silent. I know you'll do just fine. Remember, when you see the green flag, that means go. And there it is! Giddy up! <laughs> Miss Silent tried to keep up with Miss Long, but she was so tired from bouncing up and down on her horse. She didn't think she could hold on much longer. Miss Long didn't look tired at all. How did she do it? I can see the finish line. We'd better hurry if we want to beat the two races in front of us. Giddy up! Miss Long spurred her horse into an even faster gallop and passed one of the racers in front of her. Miss Silent did everything she could to keep up, but she was getting so tired. Now there was only one racer between Miss Long and the finish line. Come on, boy, we can do this. She was getting closer and closer. Just as they were almost to the finish line, Miss Long's horse gave one last burst of speed. Miss Long crossed the finish line first, and Miss Silent came in second right behind her. Oh, thank you, thank you, everyone. Oh, we did it, Miss Silent. We won the race, and you did such a great job. Miss Silent was so proud of Miss Long for coming in first. She was perfectly happy coming in second herself. You know, I just can't wait until next year's county fair. In next year's race, Miss Silent wanted to ride behind Miss Long again. Maybe they could even ride double on the same horse. They'd make a great team. Can you imagine that? Maybe you've ridden a horse and bounced around on one like that as they galloped across the field, but it still sounds scary to me. 
So what was it like for Miss Long or Miss Silent to ride a horse? Were they scared? How did they do it? Well, that's what I'd like you to write about today. Think about Miss Long and Miss Silent. What happened first in the story? Put that in a sentence. What happened next? Put that in a sentence. What happened last? Put that in a sentence. Sort of retell the exciting story of Miss Long's race. Now, since there was some excitement, you might want to use some excited marks. So let's quickly review all the different punctuation marks that we've learned so far. First, we have the period. Um, right there, it is Alex. Is Ashley here is the question mark. And it is Buddy, Dad. Now, Buddy is a comma. We'll talk about that in a minute. So do you remember what, which ones we have? There's more than just these three, so let's review them. First, let's talk about the question mark. See how it wiggles? And when you read a question, your voice kind of wiggles up too. Will you come? Then the excited mark. That's when something exciting happens to you, you uh, or you want something exciting to happen. Come here. See how that, that excitedness uh, at the end? And then there's just the period. This is the one that's used the most for when you're just telling something. I will come. And then we have the one we haven't talked much about. It is the comma. It's really easy to make. It's like a period with a tail. Yeah, this one is used for like a pause. Listen to my voice. Mom, it's raining. You hear the little pause there, how I stopped just a little bit? I didn't stop and then start another sentence. It was just a pause. Mom, it's raining. Okay, and then there is the apostrophe. That's like a comma up on the ceiling, like it has helium in it. This is used to mark when a letter is missing, like when can't or cannot becomes can't or it is becomes it's. Mom, it's raining. And then they're, um, these are both made very much the same way and you make double ones for quotation marks. See that? Come said mom. Well, you need to mark what mom said at the beginning and at the end. Come said mom. So, see if you can put some fun punctuation into your story today. Are you ready? Let's get ready to write. Sit up tall, feet flat on your floor. Tip your paper so you have a good slant and hold your pencil correctly. This is gonna be exciting. Make it be your best one. Come on. Let's get ready for phonics. You need your supply box, page 121 and 22 of the work text, 111 and 12 of the practice book, your vowel friends. We're going to add Miss Silent and a toy horse. Now you might need your toy horse if you have one, but put them aside until we need them during the discrimination time where we listen for the vowels, all right? Now today we're going to talk about long A again. Hmm. Because we, uh, one of the things that's different about our language is that a vowel sound can be spelled a couple of different ways and it still makes this sound. Let's, let's take a look. We have apron. We have train. See, there's the A in train. Here's sailor. There's the A sound in sailor. And then crayons. But if you'll notice, it's A-I are together and A-I is together there. And that's the sound that we're going to be talking about today. But Listen as we sing the song. What vowel sound do you hear? Listen, listen to the A sound. A in apron and in train. A in sailor and in crayons. All of these words have an A. Did you sing with me? That has the A sound. Now see if you can find the A sound spelled A-I in these things. Listen closely. A-I, as in hail, quail, waitress, and sailfish. Did you hear the long A? I have a whole shelf of things. They all have the A-I in them, but listen for the A sound, because Miss Long says her own name. Ready? Braid. This is a braid. Look at that hat with a braid attached to it. Here's some ponytail holders. Tail. 
Jessie's are all, most of these are Jessie's to hold her long hair in. Here's a sail. It's not really a sailboat, but this big clipper ship has some sails. I have a train here. Woo! I have some fake fingernails. Ever see someone with some fake nails on their finger like that? That would be nice to have nice long nails to scratch the back. Here's a container, and this container is a jelly jar that has buttons in it. Container. Here's some fabric, this special pattern. You see all the little swirly doodles there? That's called paisley. Here's the long A. Here's daisies. Here's a strainer for when you have like beans or something and you want to wash the juice off but keep the beans. Let's the water through, strainer. And then down here on the bottom, I've got some neat things that have the AI in them. This is bridesmaids, bridemaid. These are girls that was a, um, my girls were in a wedding. Here's a paintball mask. Does your big brother pa play paintball? This protects them from the big uh, globs of paint. Here's a sailor's hat, like sailing, sailing. Sailor hat. Here's stained glass window. Isn't that pretty? See the colors there on the stained glass. I also have a pocket watch. This is my daddy's pocket watch. Look at that chain. A lot of times in the old days you'd see them with a pocket uh, right across their, their tummy, the chain. Here's some raisins. Do you ever have raisins for a snack? Raisins. Or whole grain bread. This has 12 different grains all mixed up in it. It's very good bread. Here's a pail to play out in the sandbox. And here's some mail from some of my home set kids. They write me letters at the end of the year. It's kind of fun. So each of those things has the A sound, but it's spelled a special way. It's spelled A-I. See if you can find it in these words. Rainforest. What makes the A sound? The A-I combination makes the A sound. Ponytail. Do you hear it? Where is the A sound? Right there. There's the A-I. Wagon train. There it is. Did you point to the A-I? Mark Twain, he wrote Huck Finn and a lot of other books that uh, high schoolers read. Mark Twain. And then the state of Maine has an AI in it. Now we're going to have a little bit of a horse race between Miss Long and Mrs. Short today. We have the long A sound, when you've heard that before, and the short A sound, but let's have a little horse race today. And if you have your toy horse, I want you to pretend to be Miss Long and only ride your horse if it's a Miss Long word. Okay, now if you don't have a toy horse, you can pretend, or you can use the one from the appendix. It looks like this. You can use that horse and pretend you're riding it too, okay? Now only move if you hear a Miss Long word. You ready? Here we go. Cave. Who's going to be out front? There's Miss Long in front be beating Miss Short. How about race? Race. I hear Miss Long. Good. How about grain? Grained. Do you hear long A or short A? Long A. You should be riding your horse. How about sand? Sand. Oh, Miss Short goes ahead. Pale. Pale. There's Miss Long again. Save. There's Miss Long. All right. Pan. Pan. Ah, it's Mrs. Short. Strain. She's straining to win. There goes Miss Long. Pants. Pants. Oh, Mrs. Short looks like she's going to win. Stale. Stale. A long A. What's the last one? Who's going to win? Trail. Trail. And it's Miss Long. By a nose. Miss Long won again. Now, one of the things that we were talking about, I told you that story about the horse so that you could get a picture in your mind is that Miss Silent is behind Miss Long. Miss Silent is behind Miss Long. Or here, when they stand together in a word, Miss Silent is after Miss Long. Now, when we talked about Miss Long and Marguerite, 
Miss Long was on the vowel A, and Marguerite was the quiet E right there. That was your signal. When you saw that E at the end of the word, that was your signal that it was a long vowel. Now another signal that it's a long vowel is if there are two vowels together, like in team. If the two vowels are together, Miss Long does the talking and Miss Silent is shh. So even though I haven't taught you what it is, do you know what this word would be? T E M because Miss Silent is quiet. And these are all different Miss Silent combinations. These are all different ways to do Miss Long and Miss Silent in words. And this is the one we're going to talk about today is the AI, when Miss Long and Miss Silent are side by side. Let's see what happens. Here we have mad as Mr. and Mrs. Short. Or he made his bed. When you add marker E, it becomes long A. Now watch what happens. We have a maid, and there is the I right after the A, and that makes it be a long A. Let's try another one. Suppose we take pan. There's Mr. and Mrs. Short. Now if we add a marker E, it's pain. And if we slip in a Miss Silent, it's pain like, ouch! Let's do one more. We have Sal with Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Short. And we have Sail with Marker E, or with Miss Silent, that kind of Sail. Isn't it interesting that just one letter can make such a big difference? Here we have the word man, and it's a short vowel. But if we add Marker E, then we know this can't be the shorts. It has to be Mrs. Long, and our word is mane, like the lion has a mane. Or, if we don't have marker E, and we slip in, shh, Miss Silent. She's very quiet. Shh, what's our word? Main. It sounds exactly the same. It's still A and N, because this one is quiet, and marker E was quiet when it was there. But the two words mean something different, but they sound the same. Let's do one more. Let's try it with, let's do pal. We have P-A-L, and it's not Miss Long and Miss Silent, it is Mrs. Short and Mr. Short. There's that one consonant, one vowel, one consonant. But if we add marker E, woof, woof, we know that this A is now Miss Long. And that word is pale. Oh, you look so pale. You need some sun on your face. Or if we lose marker E again and we slip in a shh, Miss Silent, the word is pale, like in the kind of pale you would do sand with, with a shovel. Okay, So they sound a lot alike. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to make a new word. I'll show you the short vowel word, and you are going to add a Miss Silent to make a new word. Okay, show me how to do it. Okay, let's start with the short vowel word. At, family. Bat, cat, flat. Look at the picture. What is that? It's bait. So we're going to start with bat. Where will you put Miss Silent? How will you spell it? B-A-I-T for bait. Good. Let's try another one. The Ann family. Plan, ran, and van. That's a picture of rain. How will you spell rain? Let's start out with a short vowel word and let's slip in a Miss Silent. R-A-I-N for rain. Remember, Miss Silent is shh. You never hear her. She's like Marguerite. One more. This is a hard one. Clam, ram, and scram. When you go on an airplane, your bags come out down on this little thing that goes around and around. You have to claim your baggage. So let's start out with clam, and let's put in a Miss Silent. C-L-A-I-M. Great job. Now, whenever we get a new vowel character, we also get some new word families. And Miss Silent 
is right behind Miss Long in each one of these. See if you can read them with me. The ale family, nail, sail, tail, snail, frail, it means very weak. How about the Ain family? Main, the main, main street. Rain, chain, Ooh. train, and gain. How about aid? That means to help. Paid, made. Mom paid the maid to clean the house. Laid, the maid laid out the clothes. Raid. Mm, that's what the soldiers used to do long ago when they'd raid the village. Or braid. Does mom braid your hair? Jessie's trying to get me to French braid her hair all the time. She has very thick, long hair now that she's 14. <laughs> now, we've learned about AI. and We've showed you the word families. We've done some with blends. Now let's see what happens when you have three AI words together or long A words. See if you can match them up to the picture. Hmm, can you read them? If you need to push the pause button, go ahead. What is the arrow pointing to? <coughs> yes, a braid. Read all three with me. Braid, braille, and brain. You didn't think you'd ever see that word braille again, did you? It's a toughie. How about this one? That's a shock of wheat, or another word is <coughs> grain. Good. Read all three with me. Gale, gain, grain. One, well, it should be easy breezy. It's all the same vowel sound. Oh, I like to get this. You know what it is. Come on. The only thing that's different about each word is the last letter. Yeah. <coughs> Mail, good. Read all three with me out loud. Here we go. Maid, mail, main. Good job. Ooh, what's it doing outside? Now the last one is tough, I know, but I think you can figure it out. What's the answer? <coughs> rain. Now read all three with me, as many as you can. Rain, rail, and raise. Does your daddy ever has to have to ask for a raise or do you ever raise the windows if it gets hot outside? Uh-oh, got mud. Can't wash it out, so it is a stain. Good. Read all three with me. Sprain, Spain, and stain. Excellent. Okay, you know what this one is. That one's easy, isn't it? Yes. <coughs> Train. Read all three with me. Tail, trail, terrain. Good. Uh-oh. What is the tape measure around? Maybe she's trying to lose weight. So she's measuring her. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Waist. That was hard because it had an ST after it, but you should have been able to figure it out. Let's read all three together. Whale, waist, and wait. Good job. Now I told you I was going to ask you some questions about the horse race, but then I didn't really, did I? That's because I wrote some questions for you and you can't read the answers until we talked about AI. So read the question and touch the right answer. Here's the question. You can read it. What's the answer? Mm-hmm. What did Miss Long and Miss Silent ride? A horse. Good. Read the question. What's the answer? Miss Long. What was the question? Who got the prize? Excellent. Just a couple more. Read the question. What's the answer? I hope you got it right because it would be silly if you got the wrong one. Read it with me. Who has a tail? Yes, a horse. One more. Now, this might be tough because sometimes there's two words that sound alike that have different meanings. Guess which one? Yes. 
Which one is male? Now there's the kind of male that you get in the mailbox, and the other kind, the man, is spelled M-A-L-E, and they do sound alike. Now I have a new service word today for you. It's the word son. The man took his son fishing. Can you read that in a sentence for me? Son. His son is wise. Let's read it in a sentence. The father explained the riding rules to his son. Good. And I have another one for you. This one's going to come in handy for during our reading time. This is the word war. We are in a war. Can you read that for me in a sentence? The war has not ended. And let's read it together. Ooh, this is a long one. Do your best. Mr. Dale said, Mike was frail, but riding made him stronger. Mike quit riding and went to war. Oh, good job today. Those are some hard words, and those are some hard sentences. I hope you were able to read them. Anytime that it's too hard for you, you can always push the pause button and try again because as you get older, you're going to run into those words, right? Good job today. Now let's do our Yahoo review. The first thing we're going to do is review some of our old word families and you're going to see how it just changes a little bit to make some new word families. Let's start with the short vowel family. The Ann family. Read them with me. Fran, Dan, Stan, Clan, and Plan. Now let's add a marker E and that makes it Ain, Jane, Pain, Main, Crane, and Plain. You should be reading them before I do. Now let's slip in a Miss Silent and we have Ain, Brain. Strain, oh, there's a good one. Chain, Spain, and Grain. Excellent. Let's do it one more time. Start with the short vowel family, the Al family. Hal, Sal, Val, Gal, and Pal. Hal, Sal, and Val are all pals. Now let's add Marguerite, and we have Ale, Dale, Sail. Tail, tell me a tale. Stale and male. And that, that's the M-A-L-E that means a man. Now we have a Miss Silent and we have nail, sail, tail. That kind of tail is what a doggy wags. And snail and frail means very weak. Now our next activity is for you to take a look at a word and tell me what vowel people are in it. We've done this a lot, but we're adding Miss Silent today. So if you see the word take, you'll need to point to Miss, si uh, Miss Long and Marguerite. If you see the word rule, you'd point to Miss Long and Marguerite. If you see the word male, you'd point to Miss Long and Miss Silent. If you see the word pal, you'd point to Mrs. Short and Mr. Short, but let me show you how to arrange your people. This is how you should lay them out. The Mr. Mrs. and Mr. Short, Uncle Short, Grandpa Short, that's how they're going to show up in a word. Stack up your bad cats like that. So it doesn't really matter which bad cat, you just point to one of the bad cats. Then there's Miss Long, Mockery, and then we're adding Miss Silent. So if you lay the people out like that, I'm going to show you a word, and you touch the right people. You can touch them down here, you can touch them on the screen and then we'll see if you're right. Okay, look at the first one. Can you find the vowel people in the first clap? Okay, how about the second clap? See if you're right. Miss Long and Miss Silent and Mrs. Mr. and Uncle. Now, Miss Long and Mrs. Short are the only ones that make the sound. That's why the color is different. Can you read the word for me? Paint brush. Let's try it again. Put your vowel people down there. Get ready. What vowel people do you see in the first clap? Okay. In second clap. Okay, Mrs. and Mr. And then Mrs. and Miss Silent. And what would you say the word is? There's a short A and then a long A. Cat tail. Ever seen cat tails in the swamps? 
Let's try another one. The vowel people are in the first clap. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Mr. and Uncle. And then Mrs. Miss Long and Marguerite in the second clap. The word is hillside. Ooh, you're getting so good. Let's try another one. Oh, there's an easy one for the vowel people. Vowel friends. Mm -hmm. Miss and Marker E. Miss Long and Marker E. The word is drive. Excellent. Ooh, here's a toughie. Vowel people do you see in the first clap? Vowel friends. How about the second clap? Now, if you can't tell which kitty cat it is on the screen, that's fine. Just point to the bad cat box and the right bad cat will show up. Here we go. Mrs. Mr. Uncle and Grandpa and bad cat ING. And my word is pinching. Good. Okay. Got it? Mrs. Mr. Uncle and Grandpa. And the word is branch. Excellent. Oh, here's a tough one. Who is it? In the first clap. Miss Long was silent and bad cat ER and the word is strainer. Do you strain your macaroni with a strainer? Almost done. Well friends, now you would think it would be Miss Long and Marguerite. Remember Marguerite runs away when the bad cat shows up and the word is blamed. Marguerite blamed the bad cat when the bad cat howled all night. Okay, what vowel characters? This is easy. Yeah, Mrs. Mr. and Uncle, and the word is stack. Oh, that was easy breezy. One more. Ooh, it's a three clapper. Do you have enough vowel people? Yes, you do. Mrs. and Mr. Miss Long, Miss Silent, and the bad cat. And the word is explaining. I have been explaining the vowels to you. Now one of the things is when we learn new vowel people we get more words and earlier we talked about opposites like rain or shine. Now you didn't used to know the word rain and now you do and the opposite of rain is shine and that's another new one that you got recently. Some of the words that we got before were stop or go or big or little, first or last, they're opposites. Okay, do you remember the song that we sang before? It's been a while. Let's see if you can sing as much of it as you can with me, all right? I'll try to do the motions so that you remember it. Sing a song for learning, a song of opposites. Stop or go, up or down, very bright or dim. Hot or cold, yes, no, short and very tall. Can you sing the opposites? Oh, I can sing them all. Now I've got some new opposites for you. See if you can read them, even if it has some of the new vowel sounds. Rain or shine. You should be able to read both of those. Up or, now you know the word even though you can't read it yet. Down, big, little. This is a toughie. Broken and fixed. Excellent. That was a toughie. Black and white. Mm, can you get this one? Sister and brother. That's a sight word or a service word. Here's a toughie. Over, under. Good. Open. This is a tough one. Closed. Good. There's a new word. Save. Spend. Those are your opposites. Pass. A plus. Fail. That's one of your new words today. <laughs> He's very sad about that F, isn't he? And Mrs. Short is the opposite of Miss Long. Short vowel is the opposite of a long vowel. So Mrs. Short and Miss Long are 
Opposites. Good job. Now we've done a lot with our vowel people today. So we're going to use them during our service word drill. All right. You ready? Get set. Go. been kind of fun today to talk about our new vowel people. Now, one last thing left. Let's read some sentences and see which one goes with the picture. Ooh, this is a tough one. Which one is it? Pause the button. Use the pause button if you need to figure it out yourself. Here we go. Yes, the first one. Can you read it with me? The rider was straining to win the prize. The rider was waiting in the rain. There's no rider in the rain there, so I hope you didn't pick that sentence. Let's try another one. Okay, does that go with that one? Now, praised and raised are hard words, so I gave you a little hint there. Which one goes with the picture? Yes, the bottom one. There's not even any two clappers in that one. Read it with me. Jane raised the pail of grain for it to munch. And the top one reads, many trainers praised the excited riders. Wow. You are learning to read so much. Your words are getting longer and longer and longer. Isn't that exciting? I hope so. Now let's show mom what we learned on our work text. Now there are a lot of directions today, so listen closely, all right, because we're running out of time, so I'm going to go very quickly. This is called Miss Long's Race. There's a Miss Long marker E word, and we're going to add AI to each word. So go ahead and write AI in each of these blanks, and we're going to make a new word. Okay? This made the word male. This made the word chain. Which one goes with the picture? Right, you need to circle the word that goes with the picture. How about this one? Let's add AI and AI. Train and rail. Which one goes with the picture? Yeah. And do this one yourself, okay? I'm not going to tell you what it is. You should be able to figure it out from the word. Then down here at the bottom, you need to match which word in the word bank here goes with each picture. Surely you can tell what it is. Yes, there's sail and tail. And sail goes right here, right very neatly. Cross it off, and then tail goes right there. Okay, very neatly. And that's the directions that you're going to need for the back. Okay, you look at the word bank, here's the words. Word bank, here's the words, word bank, there's the words, okay? Now for the practice page. You need your crayons for this. What you're going to do is you're going to color the pictures that have a long I. Listen for the long I in ice, okay? Sun, no. Hat, no. Dime, yes, that has a long I. And that's what you're going to do on page 111. I'm going to tell you what each thing is. Inch, five, B, nine, bride, bike, pie, and slide. And you only color the things that have a long I. Okay, do you think you can do that? All right. Now on the back of the page, here's the directions. We're going to make some words, and we practice this all the time. We're going to add I-N-G. If you were to add ing to stopping, how would it be spelled? Mm -hmm. S-T-O-P-P-I-N-G. 
And if you were to add ing to riding, how would it be spelled? Yes, R-I-D-I-N-G. You don't have that marker E in there, all right? This is going to give you some good practice. And look at the word bank right up here. Here's the word bank. And you need to look at the word hop and write hopping, hope, and hoping. Okay, don't get those mixed up. And remember, after you write the word, cross it off. And if I were you, I would figure out where each one goes before I wrote any of them down because it takes a long time to erase. And that will be your independent work today. Now there's a lot to think about, so go ahead and pause right now and finish those directions. Let's get ready for handwriting. You need page 121 and 22 and a sharp pencil. Today we're going to talk about the letter Q, but first let's sing our alphabet song and you need to look for what letters come on either side of the Q. You think you can ride your horse while we sing our alphabet song? Let's do it together. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. God is good to you. And his son to die for men. O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. If I sing my alphabet, I will never, never forget. Did you ride it? Were you able to ride your horse and look and see what letters are on either side of Q? Did you get? P, Q, and then R. I hope so. Now let's talk about how to make the Q. It's been a while since we did it. It's a one o'clock starter. Starts right here and goes around, closes the gate, then pick up your pencil and give it a little prop, like a cane for the queen. And the lowercase Q is also a one o'clock starter. And it goes like it's going to make an A, but A decides to go fishing on the other side of the boat. All right? Now let's do our checklist, and then we'll put it on our work text page. Sit up tall, feet flat on the floor. Tip your paper so you have a great slant, and hold your pencil correctly. Now I'm just going to show you what we're going to write today. First, let's make a couple of cues together, all right? Just to practice. Start at 1 o'clock. I'm just going to do two with you because we're uh, already out of time here. Q. And Q. It's easy, to, it's easy to go that way and you will finish the rest. Here's a sentence. The train went off the rails. Don't forget the punctuation mark. And all of these are AI words. Read them with me. Rail, sail, rain, gain. And here's the tough one. Quail, mail, train, and drain. All right, can you copy all those? Do your very best. And that will be your independent work today. You know, I think I'd like to have a race with Miss Long. I'm going to race with Miss Long. Here we go. See you in a little while. Let's get ready for reading. You need your reader, page 48 to 51, page 61 of the work text, a bookmark, and a pencil. Do you know what it means to be patriotic? It means to love your country. You know, we have some wonderful freedoms here in the United States. What kind of freedoms do we have? Freedom to worship, freedom to our own opinions. You know, in some countries, they have a dictator who makes all the decisions, or some countries, they're at war with each other in the country trying to decide who gets to be in charge. You know, sometimes 
we help other countries who want to have the same freedoms that we do. And one of the ways we help them is to send our soldiers to protect the people who wish to have freedom. Sometimes we have to protect ourselves from men who don't love freedom and wish to do our own people harm. Do you know anyone who's enlisted in the military, any of the branches of the military? Do you know anyone who's gone away to help others, to serve in a war? Well, our story today is about a father who must leave his family to go overseas to the war in Iraq. And I was hoping that a certain friend of mine would be stopping by today to read with us. Her daddy was gone from home for almost a year. Ah, there she is. Come on in. Kristen, thanks Hi. for coming today, and you're just in time. Boy, you are tall, just like your brother Caleb and your daddy. Hey, what you got there? Some medals. Medals. Ooh, let's look at them. Let's see. This says um, Army Operation Iraqi Freedom, letting freedom ring, and it's got the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and the Coast Guard on there. That's pretty cool. Ooh, look at that bag. What do you get this for? My, I think my, my dad, my dad did a good job in the Air Force. Oh, okay, well, that's great. How about this one? Ooh. That was from a three-star general. Um, he helped um, the three-star general do some carpentry, oh. carpenter work on a oh. building. Wow, that is so cool. Look at that. And then this one says. Preserving, no, presented by the commander. Whoa, outstanding performance. Does your daddy sing? No. Oh, this is for being in the Air Force? Yes. Oh, that is pretty cool. Wow, those are, they're not the kind of medals that you pin on your chest, are they? No. So your daddy is in the Air Force? Yes. Um, how long was he gone? One, the um, longest time he was gone was four months. Four months at one time, but how, was he like gone for like over uh, again and again for like a year? No. No, he was never gone for a year. Oh, okay. Did he get to come back and see you sometimes, or was he gone for the whole four months? He was gone for the whole four months. Oh, did you go visit him sometimes? No. No. It was too far away. That would be hard. You know, today we are reading a story uh, about a brave U.S. Air Force officer who gets called up to go to war and serve his country. And we'll also be talking about the family that he left behind. You know about that, don't you? About being left behind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, before we begin, we're going to read a couple of words that we're going to run across today. Because we need to be prepared, just like in the Army, be prepared. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some words. And you, just like you know, you can read as many words as you want, but you only have to read the word in yellow. OK? Can you read them with me? Susan likes to, to chat on the, the telephone. telephone. Do you like to chat on the telephone? <laughs> okay. John, John earned, earned the, the rank, rank of major, major in, in the, the Air, Air Force. Force. Major Just is going to be one of our words today. Soldiers live and work at, at a military, military base. base. Yes, the word is base. Good job. Ooh, that's where your daddy went. What is it? Iraq, Iraq. is a country in the, the Middle East. East. Iraq. Can you read that? Iraq. Yeah, good. And there's another one that you know. Kuthur is a country that, that is, is close, close to, to Iraq. Iraq. Kuthur. You know, in 2003, the United States was at war with Iraq, and that other country, it's pronounced Kuthur, was next door. Did your daddy ever go to Iraq and Kuter? Not Kuter, but Iraq. Oh, he went to Iraq. Wow. Well, he's going to. Oh, he's going to go again? I didn't know that. Well, he hasn't gone yet, oh. but he's going to. Really? Oh, wow. We'll see. Can you show me on a map where it might be? Let's see. Is it right there? Yeah. Actually, that's Africa. It's kind of fuzzy. There's Iraq, and there's Kuter right there. Whoa, that is really far away from home. And it wasn't just the Air Force that went over there, like your dad. There are five branches of the military that our soldiers serve in. Do you know what they are? Navy, Iraq, Air Force. Um, Let's see. Army, Navy, 
Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Right, those are the five branches of the military. And I've seen their flags, and they all have their own little special symbols. They're all different, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, I've got some words I need you to practice. They're the service words. Will you practice them with me? Okay, okay let's take a look at them. You read them with us. Here we go. Father. There's a good one. Your father went to Iraq. Love. Good. You love your daddy. Son. Caleb is your daddy's son. There. There. There's two kinds of there. There's like the over there and there's like their daddy went to Iraq where it means it belongs to them, right? Okay, let's try another one. Almost done. War. War. There's a war in Iraq. And this one. Work. Your daddy will work in the Air Force. Good job. We're going to run into those words today. You know, today's true story is about Major Allen White. He was an officer in the United States Air Force. And I thought I'd show you a picture of the real man that this story is about. Here's his family. There's uh, Major White and his wife and his son, Chris. That's his real family. You know, he was stationed in Kutur. What do you think his job might have been? Lots of jobs there. Well, let's open to page 48 and find out what his job was. There, yeah, right there is a bookmark. Good job. Mm. Read the title of the story out loud for me. A Brave Father. Oh, very good. What do you think makes this father brave? Hmm, I don't know. Look what they're doing in the picture. Does he look very brave? What are they doing? Sitting. Sitting, talking, yeah. You know, this is a two-part story. What is the chapter title? Can you find it? Major White's Trip. Major White's Trip. Mm, he's going to take a trip, but he hasn't left yet. So what do you think he'll do before he leaves? Pack all his things he needs. Yeah, pack everything. I want you to read the page silently to find out what Major White is doing. What is Major White doing? What's he doing? Packing. He's packing. Why is he packing his things? Because he's going to get ready to go to um, war. War. Yeah. Now, which countries are at war from the story? Do you remember what they are? What's that? Navy. Well, which countries? The names oh. of the countries. Um. There's us. Which uh, is? America. America and Iraq. Iraq. Yeah, United States and Iraq. Now, do you think that Major White has an important job? Yes. Yeah, he's a major. There's lots of responsibilities, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Now, who is the major leaving behind at home? Who's leaving? Who's at home? The dad. No, the dad's going to war. Who's staying home? Oh. Chris and his mom. And the mom, yeah. So what does he do before he leaves? He packs and he's sitting on the steps with yeah, his son to say spending, goodbye. Yeah, he's spending time with Chris to say goodbye. Do you think that Major White and his family did anything special while they were spending their time together? What did they do? Did you do anything special before your daddy left? Well, when he left where I for two weeks in, I think, Germany mm -hmm. at Valentine's. We had a little Valentine's party oh. before he left. Oh, a little early Valentine's, huh? Well, mm -hmm. that's, that's nice. Now, what three special words do Chris and his dad say to each other? I love you. I love you. Did you tell your daddy that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you think you could read this out loud and sound like a daddy would sound? when you read the daddy words and sound like the little boy when you read the little boy words. Can you try that? Hmm. Let's try it together. The U.S. was at war with Iraq. Good. Major White was getting packed to help in the war. Major White wanted to spend time with his wife and his son Chris. Chris and his dad sat, sat, sat on the steps. I love you, Dad, said Chris, and I love you, Chris, said Major White. Chris and his mother were sad. Wow, you read that beautifully, didn't she do a great job? Were you able to keep up with her? Whew, she read that so fast. Good job. Now, why do you think Chris and his mom are sad? Because they're going to miss him. Yeah, he's going to be gone. He's going to be gone, time. yeah. Look over the next page. 
Oh no, it looks like they're leaving. Oh no. Hmm. Where are they? They're at the airport. Yeah. Now, how do you know that's not a military plane? Because it does. It has that little. Yeah. Thing on it. it would have a flag on it if it was a military plane, wouldn't it? Yeah. So they aren't leaving from a base. Hmm. Read the whole page silently to find out how Major White and his men will get to war. Is he traveling with anyone else? Yes. Who? Some other um, people in this unit. Yes. You know, the title Major means that he has a lot of men that work for him. So what rank is your daddy? Is he a master sergeant? Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's pretty good. Does he have men that work for him? A few maybe? Yes. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. Now, what do what does your daddy do? He, um, I think he maybe plans the cargo and the plane. Oh yeah, he makes sure that the stuff doesn't shift around so it doesn't go, you know, <laughs> he has to make sure everything is even so it doesn't slip and slide around. That's a, that's a good thing. Now, how will Major White and his men travel? By bus? No. no, they're going by plane. By plane. What do they do while they're on the plane? Take a nap. Why do you suppose that is? Because it might take a couple days to get there. Yeah, it's, far away. it's a very long plane ride, and they get really tired. So when you read this, could you sound like you're getting sleepy? Will you try that for me? Okay, you can do it. Let's try it. Major White had many men who worked for him. They had jobs to do in the war. Major White and his men got on the big plane. Get sleepy. Many of the men had time to take a, a nap on the plane. Oh, good. Now, where are they headed? Do we know? Hmm. Think the next page will tell us? Let's look. Ooh. Where is he? Where's the plane land? Can we tell where it lands from this picture? Uh, maybe we can guess, but the only way to find out for sure is to read the whole page silently and find out where the plane landed. Where does the plane land? Strange name. Can you tell me that where it landed? Cooter. Cooter. Very good. And how long did it take to get there? You know? A long time. Yeah. I heard that it takes 18 hours to fly from South Carolina to Cooter. Let me show you on the map. Here goes the airplane. Whoa, Millie. That is far. Can you find that word Cooter on the page? Can you frame it with your fingers? Find Cooter. There it is, right there. Good job. It's easy because it has uppercase letters. That was pretty easy breezy, wasn't it? Yeah. Cooter. You know, some people pronounce it Cootar, but Cooter is the way the people there pronounce it, or at least as close as I can get to that. Now, what job does Major White and his men have there? What do they do in Cooter? They. Do you remember from the story what they did? Fix planes. Yes, they fix the airplanes. Hmm. So, what does Major White help his men to do? Yeah. What's he do? Fix the planes. He checks the planes and he fixes them. Hmm. You know, they're probably looking at them to see if there's something wrong with them, something that they need to fix, you know? Do you think he has to weigh all the boxes? Do you think he does all that? Yes. You think so? He's a major. If I was a major, I'd get other people to do stuff for me. Do you think he does that? Does your dad get stuff, people to do stuff for him, or does he do all the work? He does some, and some of them do some. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. The big guy does some, in the, and the... Um, the men that work with him do some, too. Do you think that fixing planes is an important job? Yes. Why? Because if you did not fix the planes, they couldn't fly back. Yes. They would, I wouldn't want to drive in a plane that wasn't fixed, would you? No. So who gives the men everything they need for their jobs? Who does it? The um, Major. Major White does, yes. Let's read this page out loud as if we were kind of explaining Daddy's job to someone, okay? Can you, and don't forget those tough words. Let's read it out loud. The plane landed at the base in Kruger. It was time to get to work. 
there were planes to fix. Major White helped his men check the planes. Major White gave his men the things they had to have to do their jobs. Wow, great. So the Major is settling down in his job to help with the war. Hopefully there won't be any bullets nearby or anything. Was your dad ever in danger, you know, with bullets and anything like that? I don't think so. Oh, that's good, that's good. Did you think about your daddy a lot when he was gone? Yeah. What did you think? I missed him a yeah. lot. Do you think he missed you? Yeah. Let's read the next page silently to find out who Major White misses. So who does Major White miss? His wife and his son. Yes. What does he do when he misses his family? He talks on the phone to them. Oh, on the phone. How else can he talk to them? Maybe on the... Um, computer. Computer email. Did your daddy and your mommy email very much when he was away? A little bit. A little bit? Mainly did he call? Yes. He did. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you know, it can be very expensive to call, can't it? Yeah. Was it hard to find a good time to call him? Sometimes. When he was way over there? Well, he sometimes my dad, since it's changed time, my dad would call my mom like in the middle of the night. Oh no, yes, we got to think about that because it's not the same time in both places. Let me show you the time zones in the world. In South Carolina, it'll be seven o'clock in the morning when over in Iraq, it'll be three o'clock in the afternoon. So you really do have to be careful when you call someone. So what do you? How do you think they feel when they miss each other? Can you think of a word for how they feel when they miss each other? Homesick or sad. Homesick, sad, those are good words. So when we read this page out loud, we need to sound homesick like they're homesick for each other. Okay, let's try it. Major White missed his wife and son, mm -hmm. but there were times to chat with them. When Chris was getting up at home, it was past lunchtime for his dad in Cooter. Cooter. When it was lunchtime for Chris and his mother, it was bedtime in Cooter. Yes, very good. Do you think that they worry about their dad at all? Do you think Major White will be in danger there in Cooter? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Cooter is very close to Iraq, so it's possible that they might experience some unexpected trouble. They must always be careful. Hey, what did you do when you were worried about your daddy? I prayed. Pray, yes. Praying is a good thing to do when your heart is worrying. God knew right where he was and was watching over him, wasn't he? Thank you for reading with me today, Kristen, and thank you for bringing your daddy's medals. That was a neat thing to share. You are officially one of my clubhouse kids. I'll be careful. Hey, thank you for coming. Didn't she do a great job? Give these back to your daddy very carefully and tell him thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So how are you at reading maps? Let's try one together. Here we have Canada and the United States. The question is, where was Major White from? Color the answer red. Yes, he was from the United States. And that's exactly what you're gonna do on page 61. Read the question, and that's how you show the right answer with the color, all right? Then down at the bottom, there are some missing words from the sentence. Let's do one together. Major White went on the plane to Couture. He was, yes, he was brave. And that's exactly what you do on the bottom. Here are your three words right here. And you fill in the answer right there, okay? A lot to think about, and that will be your independent work today. Do you suppose Phineas ever gets homesick? Hmm. You know, being away from family must be hard. Soldiers miss their families. I'm really glad they choose to be soldiers, though. Without them, who would protect us? Yeah, but maybe I'll grow up and be a soldier. Then I'd be able to tell really great stories about what happens. Like in the book, Papa Tells Cheetah a Story. Only in this story, Cheetah's Papa was in a war from a long time ago. He fought in the Spanish War. The, the Spanish War? Uh-huh, and he had a special job to take a very important message to a nearby camp. A camp? 
I love camp. Only this was a camp for soldiers, Barkley. It was where they slept when they weren't fighting. Oh, so the camp was hard to get to. Was it ever? In the book, Papa's telling Cheetah about the whole thing. Only, I think he was making some of the story up. See, he had to fight, fight a huge snake. A, a snake? How big was it? Almost as big as the horse he was riding on. Wow. And then there was a gargantumongous alligator. Uh, ooh, let me guess. Cheetah's Papa barely escapes becoming an alligator lunch by riding its back, bucking bronco style. Actually, he swims underneath it, and the important papers don't even get wet. They're in a really cool container that keeps everything dry. Well, well what happens next? Well,